Welcome to Brilliant Corners. My name's Thomas Wendt, and on behalf of Lighthouse Arts, Inc., we welcome you to our online series. For more episodes like this, as well as other content, visit our website, lighthouseartsmusic.org. You can also follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, at Lighthouse Arts, Inc. By the early 1950s, Kenny Clark had become one of the most in-demand drummers in New York City. Between 1950 and 1956, he made countless records for both large and small record labels, recording with just about everyone there was to record with. From Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, to younger musicians who were brand new on the scene like Cannonball Adderley and Horace Silver drummer and jazz historian Kenny Washington. In the 50s, he really came into his own. And before he left for Europe, he was the house drummer at the recording label Savoy. And Rudy Van Gelder made a lot of those recordings and the sound that Rudy captured from Kenny Clark is just unbelievable. He used a very simple set of drums, snare drum, bass drum, a hi-hat, and a ride cymbal. No tom-toms. He made more music with that setup, with that combination, than most guys could make with five or six drums and all the cymbals. Let's take a listen to Kenny Clark from April 29th of 1954 with the Miles Davis all Stars recorded at Rudy Van Gelder's studio. This is a blues entitled Walkin'. Check out how he hooks up with bassist Percy Heath and pianist Horace Silver. It's a near perfect example of what a jazz rhythm section should sound like. Give it a listen. Now, as Kenny Washington alluded to earlier, Kenny Clark did indeed leave America for Europe. He moved to Paris, France in the summer of 1956 after receiving an invitation to play from pianist and composer Michel Legrand. Kluke had already had a good taste of Europe, first in 1938 with Edgar Hayes' band and then again in 1948 with Dizzy Gillespie's big band. Kenny always felt more at home and accepted and respected in Europe, not having to deal with the terrible racism and prejudice that is still such a big part of our society here in America. Kenny was rightly treated like the master musician and artist that he is in Paris. He began to work regularly with all of the best musicians in town, including master pianist Bud Powell, who was living in Paris at the time. He and Kluke, along with French bassist Pierre Michelot, created a trio together known as the Three Bosses. They would enjoy a long residency at the Blue Note Club in Paris. And in 1960, Kluke teamed up with Belgian pianist, composer, and arranger Francie Bolan to form the Clark Bolan Big Band, a truly international ensemble that took the jazz world by storm. This band featured musicians from the United States and all over Europe. Expatriate musicians like Benny Bailey, Sahib Shahab, Idris Suleiman, Jimmy Woody, eventually Johnny Griffin, and Billy Mitchell. From Europe, there was alto saxophonist Derek Humble from England, the great Danish trombonist Aki Persson, and Danish saxophonist Carl Drevo, among many, many others. It was a truly incredible band. Let's check out Kluke with the Clark Bolan Big Band from December 13th of 1961 
recorded in Cologne, Germany. This is from their very first album on the Atlantic label, entitled Jazz is Universal. Here's a tune written and arranged by pianist Francie Bolan. This is entitled Box 703, Washington, D.C. Give this a listen. Yes, indeed, this was such a special band. They would go on to record a bunch of different records for several different record labels into the earliest 1970s. Matter of fact, one of their later records was a reunion with none other than Kenny Clark's ex-wife, the great vocalist Carmen McRae. The name of that record is November Girl. Kenny Clark enjoyed a very fruitful and rewarding second act in his career living in Europe. In addition to the Clark Bolan Big Band, in 1964, Kluke's Danish wife, Daisy, gave birth to their son, Laurent. In 1965, he even started a drumming school with Dante Agostino at the Selmer Music Headquarters. The two would also collaborate on a drum method book coming out in 1967. In 1979, Kluke returned to his hometown of Pittsburgh, PA, where he was invited to be a guest lecturer at the University of Pittsburgh by saxophonist Nathan Davis, who had established a jazz program earlier in the 70s. One of the last recordings that Kenny Clark made was in 1983 for the Soul Note label. This was a very special record because it featured Kluke alongside three other drummers, Famudu Don Moyer, Andrew Cyril, and Milford Graves. That's right, all four of them playing together. Let's check out the first tune on this record, which was composed by Kenny Clark, dedicated to his son. This is entitled Laurent. Kenny Clark spent his last days at his home outside Paris, tending to his garden and talking and visiting with old friends. On January 26, 1985, Kenny Clark passed away at his home from a heart attack. He was 71 years old. An essential innovator of American music, as well as a tireless advocate for the equality of all black Americans, Kenny Clark lived his life with a soulful style, grace, and integrity that's nothing short of inspirational. I hope you've been inspired a little today. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Take care. Thanks so much for joining us today on Brilliant Corners. For more episodes like this, as well as other content, visit our website, lighthouseartsmusic.org and follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Lighthouse Arts Inc. We hope to see you again soon, but in the meantime, stay safe and stay close to the music.